This video was sponsored by CuriosityStream in partnership with my streaming service Nebula. Hey, happy Friday, and welcome to a very spicy special episode of the Friday Checkout that is completely dedicated to explaining what is going on with Reddit, Wall Street, GameStop, all that kind of stuff. I think this is a really big topic and it kind of warrants a full video, so let's take a look. As always, we also have a new weekly tech knowledge quiz with 20 questions to tech your tech knowledge on. If you get at least 15 right, you can get an invite code to my app, Crowd, so check it out. More info in the description and welcome to the Friday Checkout. Earlier this week, all hell broke loose when shares of multiple companies, including game retailer GameStop, movie theater operator AMC, headphone maker Koss, networking giant Nokia, and more, suddenly skyrocketed out of seemingly nowhere, rising to sometimes 20 times their price within days. These big spikes were the result of a large group of Redditors coming together to start a so-called short squeeze, and everyone seems to have a hot take on it, including supreme meme overlord Elon Musk, politicians from both sides of the aisle, including AOC and Ted Cruz, and uh, even porn star Mia Khalifa for some reason, apparently. There is a lot to unpack here, so let's take a look at what happened, whether or not you should take your pitchforks out, as well as what the short-term and long-term implications of the story are. So to understand a short squeeze, we first need to explain what a short is. In the simplest terms possible, shorting a company means making a very aggressive bet that the price of a certain stock will decrease over time. How does one make such a bet? Well, say the shares of a company like GameStop are trading at $10 each. An investor, like Melvin Capital for example, comes and borrows some of those shares which they promise to give back within a certain period of time. They then quickly sell those borrowed shares to other buyers at the current market price, receiving $10 per share. If the price decreases over time, say to $6, they can then buy up new shares at that price and return the borrowed shares, having made $4 on each. That's pretty simple to understand on its own, but the obvious risk is that if the share price goes up instead of going down, the short seller will still have to buy shares at the very high price now and make a loss, because they have to return the shares that they borrowed. And while a price can only ever go down to zero, there's basically no limit to how high it can go and thereby how much money one can lose on a short. Investopedia aptly describes this as potentially unlimited losses. Of course, when a Wall Street investor hears potentially unlimited losses, they think to themselves, that's clearly not risky enough, let's make it more risky. Because after all, the more risky something is, the higher the potential returns. So they end up doing two pretty insane things. First, the same shares can technically be shorted multiple times, basically infinitely. So investors can technically borrow more shares than there are in a company, leading to companies like GameStop, for example, having around 140% of their shares shorted at some point, which, and you might be shocked to hear this, is extremely risky. And two, there's this thing called leverage. A hedge fund like Melvin typically manages a few billion dollars. And sure, they could just invest like one billion of those into a deal, but that would be oh so boring. So instead, for each deal they make, they can also borrow a huge amount of money that they add to the deal to make it much bigger. That's called leverage, using borrowed money to invest alongside yours. Leverage is like a multiplier. So if a hedge fund hits their target, they will make multiple times the profit that they would have normally made. But if they mess up, they are now liable for a multiple of a quote, potentially unlimited amount. So you know, basically infinity. So in a nutshell, these gigantic funds are making big bets with money that they basically don't own on shares that technically basically don't even exist. And oh, by the way, if anything goes wrong in this deal, they're infinitely liable for it. Sounds like not much has changed since the 2008 financial crash, doesn't it? Except it has. With commission-free trading apps like Robinhood on the rise, millions of regular people have started trading over the last few years, and a handful of them over at the Wall Street Bets subreddit smelled blood. They started hatching plans for a so-called short squeeze. Basically, if enough of them would buy shares in a heavily shorted company like GameStop, they would drive its price up. As the price goes up, the hedge fund panics and buys stocks so that they can cover at least some of their short positions. But as they do that, their purchase then drives the price even higher. 
which further attracts more investors, creating a feedback loop known as the short squeeze, where the hedge fund has to buy these insanely expensive shares unless it wants to wait for the prices to go even higher. Short squeezes aren't inherently illegal, and they have been done by institutional investors in the past before. For example, there was one in 2008 that temporarily made Volkswagen the world's most valuable company, but it's the first time that we've seen so-called retail investors, or in other words, normal people, collaborate collaborating as a group to execute one. So that was the plan, and it worked incredibly well. The small guys basically outsmarted the big guys, and they made them pay dearly in the billions for their incredibly risky bets. But the story isn't quite over yet, and there are many potential outcomes that might range from fantastic to terrifying. The potential upside is great. A lot of individuals could make millions at the expense of these fat cat hedge funds, many of them already have. In addition, they might force those fat cats to be extra careful in the future with recklessly shorting companies, especially to such perverse degrees as they have done with GameStop. And maybe, just maybe, they could force regulators to ban some of the most insanely risky investment practices of big investors altogether, with a growing number of politicians from both US parties apparently gearing up for a fight already. So things could go very well, but they could also go wrong in so many ways. Big financial firms have already pressured trading platforms to limit retail investors from buying volatile stocks while they themselves can keep trading, and they could successfully lobby regulators to further limit retail investors instead of regulating them too. After all, Wall Street loves free market capitalism whenever they're making money and then quickly falls in love with socialist ideas such as bailouts funded by taxpayers whenever there is a crisis. So I can see them giving this a try. Alternatively, these bets made by Redditors could also go belly up on their own, even without any government intervention, because over time they have become increasingly risky. While the initial plan to execute a short squeeze on GameStop was smart and was executed by a fairly dedicated circle of people with a clear vision of what they were doing, we have moved far past that and well into FOMO land by now. GameStop was at some point the most highly traded stock in the world. Since then, traders have picked up on tons of other companies to invest into as well, which seem much less convincing, and the subreddit has tripled their follower counts in the last few days, implying that that maybe millions of first-time traders are jumping in on the hype train, buying risky stocks for up to 20 times what they were traded for not long ago. That could work and it could make many more people rich like we've seen over the last few days, but this is also starting to look more and more like a bubble, with many completely inexperienced people joining in on the fun and the community moving more and more to the peripheries to find new companies, which kind of is risky. Bubbles like to burst when things get risky, and that could wipe out the investments of many of the people on these forums and Reddit communities. Anyway, if you like sticking it to the man and supporting the little guys fighting the good fight, then maybe consider joining me and many fantastic independent creators over at Nebula. Nebula is a beautiful video streaming platform we, the creators, have built for ourselves to take our fortunes into our own hands, and it includes no ads, no unnecessary tracking, just fantastic content from thoughtful creators like Real Engineering, Wendover Productions, Polymatter, Low Spec Gamer, and more. All of our regular YouTube videos are there on the platform, with my tech author ones even going up a day or two earlier than on YouTube, and the platform comes with tons of great originals, including a fantastic breakdown of the Nighthawk stealth airplane by Mustard, a full documentary series on the logistics of D-Day by Real Engineering, and more. Nebula lets us create videos without the fear of demonetization or mysterious shadow bans or whatever, and best of all, you can access it for free with a subscription to my sponsor, CuriosityStream which itself is less than 15 bucks for the entire year. That's like barely more than a dollar a month. CuriosityStream is of course the premier place on the internet for high quality professional documentaries from the founders of the Discovery Channel, and they have a huge library of science, nature, and history content to binge while you are stuck at home. I have recently finished watching Cyber War on CuriosityStream, which is a documentary on hackers and governments doing nasty things, because apparently that's just the world we're living in from now on. And there's a ton of other great content here from hosts like David Attenborough, Jane Goodall, Stephen Hawking, and more. So check them out at the link in the description, and I'll see you next week.